Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. This is a topic that I've had on my mind for a while now because these terms were also confusing me. Today we're going to be talking about upcycling versus downcycling versus recycling, how they're all sometimes interchangeable and then how we can actually tell them apart and use them correctly. So this is probably going to be a really short and to the point video. If you have any more questions about this topic or any questions similar to this, please leave them down below for the rest of us and hopefully I can make a spin-off as well. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I talk about all sorts of things zero waste focusing on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste and practical ways to be an activist. And if you find any use out of this video, you think it's helpful, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with others as well so we can spread this knowledge and we can all learn a little bit more about being sustainable. First, let's talk about recycling. This is likely a term that everyone has heard of. Even if you don't have recycling in your area, it's just a very common phrase, unlike the other two. And I'm sure most of us even have access to curbside composting and know quite a bit about recycling. Maybe not quite a bit. I feel like most Americans especially don't really know that much about recycling and if if you're in that boat no worries we all were at some point i have a full recycling playlist i will leave linked above and all the individual videos linked down below so that you can continue watching and learning about recycling after this and i'm sure that many of us also think that recycling is like the key to saving the planet i was i was in that boat a long time but over the past few years i've learned that oh recycling really is just like a half step above the landfill it's really not that great especially because our recycling system in the u.s particularly is very very flawed but what exactly is recycling what does it even mean from the oxford dictionary recycling is the action or process of converting waste into reusable material so it is essentially waste that can be reused over and over and over again sort of what i mean is particularly plastic i have it broken down for each individual topic paper plastic metal glass and even recycling electronics, how it's done, how many times can these things be recycled, is it even sustainable to be recycling these materials, and so forth. All those individual videos are linked below. So we think that recycling plastic is a good thing, and don't get me wrong, I think recycling is a very, very important market. And if you wanna learn more about the importance of recycling and the importance of shopping recycled materials, you can check out this video up here. But the downside with plastic is that plastic is actually downcycled, which really inspired me to create this video. Plastic can only be recycled one or two times, before it can't be recycled again. Do I have something? We're just gonna use this bottle of sewing machine oil, for example. Is this even recyclable? I, I honestly doubt it. Say I put this in my recycling bin and it gets recycled. When this thing is melted down, you're gonna be left with just a little bit. And then when you recycle a, that little piece of plastic again, it's just gonna get smaller and smaller and eventually turn into nothing. And the same actually goes with paper. I did a really fun experiment during COVID that was recycling paper at home and trying to see how many times I can get that paper to be recycled before I really like literally ran out of paper. I don't know where it goes. I don't know how it works. So if anyone's like a scientist or an expert on why paper and plastic in particular just kind of disappear over time. I would love to learn more about that. But on the other hand, good news, glass and metal can be recycled infinitely. They don't lose any of their structural integrity. They don't lose anything in the process. So those two are particularly valuable recycling markets. But again, that leads us to downcycling. What even is downcycling? Downcycling is the recycling of waste wherein the recycled material becomes of lower quality and functionality than the original material. As I already explained a little bit, when you recycle this, you're just gonna be left with like a little tiny piece of it so it, it structurally becomes less it's going down in size but also sometimes when you're recycling things like plastic the functionality doesn't continue as well so as you can see recycling and downcycling are often used interchangeably when you're saying oh i'm going to recycle this plastic bottle you're really downcycling it but at the same time though it is still being downcycled it's still being recycled and then it's being used for something else and that's why it's not just technical you you actually can use them interchangeably there's a little bit of overlap between recycling and downcycling as well as recycling and upcycling so then what's upcycling it's literally just the opposite of downcycling instead of taking something and turning it into something of lower quality you're taking it and turning it into something of higher quality i think a really popular example that i think a lot of people have heard about is park benches i know a lot of schools and hospitals and other organizations collect bottle caps from the tops of like water bottles bottles and soda bottles, detergent bottles and so forth, because those small pieces of plastic can't actually go in your recycling bin. They are a plastic number two, meaning they can't be recycled with the plastic number one that your water bottle is. And because it's so small, you can't put it in your recycling bin separately because it could get lost, it could tangle the machines, it could fall out, it could. So there are a lot of programs out there that will collect these bottle caps and recycle them by themselves 
in a process that's not gonna harm the machines. I think the most common thing they use them for is to make park benches. And this is a great example of upcycling as well because that's getting a lot more use than a single use water bottle. A water bottle that you're gonna be using once, put it in your recycling bin and probably never be seen again. And hopefully be recycled though, not necessarily. So that bench is getting added value. It's, it's more valuable, it's getting more use out of it than that plastic water bottle. Another example, I love to talk about her, my homemade rug. I've made four of them now out of old clothing. But why would I why would I turn clothing into a rug? Shouldn't it just be used as a shirt or pants, whatever? Yes, but a lot of the clothing I chose to use was stained, rip, or like hyper personalized things like band competition 2015 in wherever middle of nowhere, Ohio, or Emma's senior gymnastics team. Something that if I donate to Goodwill, nobody's gonna buy that. So I chose to turn it into something that I could get more use out of and likely won't end up in the landfill. Cause if you donate something like that and they see that it's not, it's not gonna sell, they're probably gonna throw it away. I have a whole video talking about the the dark side to thrift stores. You can check that out up here. It's something that I think needs talked about more. So I really encourage you to check out that video. And that's really what inspired me to create this rug. I'm getting much more value out of this and my other rugs than I did from a pile of t-shirts that couldn't be donated. But isn't upcycling the same as reusing? Yes and no. Again, there's some overlap. <laughs> there's a lot of crossover between these terms. So upcycling is taking something and using it for something else. It is taking a t-shirt and turning it into a rug. Reusing is something like these jars that I have to store my pine cone collection in. Am I using it for something different than I think this was peanut butter. Yes, but I'm still using it as a jar. This shoe box also has a pine cone in it. Do you wanna see it? It's really big. If anyone's interested in my pine cones, listen, I would love to talk about them. I have recently become obsessed with trees and their cones, slowly becoming a hobby hobbyist arborist. This box is still being used for its intentional use and that is storage of my sugar pine cone. Look at her. But this isn't the same as Upcycling, this is reusing. Upcycling would be say turning a bunch of boxes into a cat tree or turning it into a fort for your kids. That's repurposing. It's using it for something that was its not intended use. Hopefully that clears it up a little bit. So with upcycling and reusing, I personally use them interchangeably. Sometimes I have a preference, like if I, like with the crafting stuff that I do, I always call that upcycling because I am giving it new life. But for the most part, you could say I repurpose t-shirts into a rug. I, I think they're interchangeably. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you use them interchangeably? Do you have any more questions? And I hope that this clears some things up for you guys. Hopefully it makes things a little more clear when you're like researching online and following influencers and you hear them talking about this stuff. Now you can actually understand what they're saying. Once again, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I would love to talk about this more. Um, and if you have any content that you would like to see from me throughout the end of the year, please let me know. Let's talk about what I'm gonna actually have coming up. I was like super inspired to make content this summer. Now I'm kind of in a little bit of a writer's block, if you will like I don't feel burnt out like I'm excited to make content but I'm just like I don't know what to make content about after that I have a period underwear review re-review because I haven't talked about period underwear on the channel in a long time and a lot of people are wondering do I still like the brands I recommended a few years ago do I still like period underwear so I'm gonna be talking about that in a video coming up I have a gift guide coming up and this year I'm finally doing it before Black Friday I normally like wait until mid-December to do it and I'm like wait everyone's probably already bought their Christmas gifts unless you're a procrastinator like me so the gift guide is coming out in mid-November this year I am so excited for it. I'm also gonna be talking about the environmental impact of Christmas. I've done the environmental impact of Halloween, of Valentine's Day, of Black Friday, Thanksgiving. I've done a lot of other winter holidays. I will leave those all linked below if you'd like to check them out, but I have not done an environmental impact of Christmas yet. So we're gonna be talking about that. I'm probably going to do a brand re-review for other brands. If you are unfamiliar with that, I try to do that once a year of brands that I've reviewed throughout the year and talk about them again. After I've been using them for several months, do I still like them? Do I have any critiques and so forth? So we'll probably see brands on there like the Whisper Bidet, the Tushy Bidet, which I have lots of thoughts about, my Aventon e-bike, Bodhi reusable tissues and toilet paper. Anyway, pretty much any brand that I've reviewed this year, I'm gonna talk about it again after several months of use. And then my favorite video, I just started this last year, but it's, it's become my favorite thing I do. <laughs> and it's a year of bloopers. It has nothing to do with my content, 
but if you're unfamiliar, at the end of all my videos, I have bloopers. I think they are hilarious. They make editing so much fun. And I think it makes me being a creator more real and more personable. Actually, I do it on Christmas. It's my Christmas gift to you guys. I compile all my bloopers from January to December in one video and you get to laugh at me for like 30 straight minutes. And then of course in January, I have my in eco resolutions. I try to do that every January as well. If you wanna make some New Year's resolutions, but like more eco, I'll have a video about that coming out. And then free ways to live low waste, my zero waste on a budget series, part 10, which will make that. 250 ways to live zero waste completely for free. If you have any content you wanna see, maybe related to the holidays, any products you're interested in that you want me to review, environmental topics you wanna to talk about. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time, especially if you made it all the way to the end. And I, again, appreciate your support and would love your feedback because of course this channel is for you and my TikTok and my Instagram. And I wanna make content that you guys want to engage with and you guys want to consume. Yeah, and if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And until next time, remember that your small actions have a big impact on the long run. Bye guys. Hello everyone. Okay, I didn't think it was recording. <laughs> okay, I, I was trying to read the Japanese anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, I already talked about all of this. I jumped way ahead of the game because there is a little overlap between, not between all three of these, but between upcycling and downcycling and between upcycling and recycling. That was way wrong. Ooh. I'm gonna put this in the blooper since this is a short video. You can barely see this one. Do I have a favorite pine cone? Look at this one though, it's so small. What's it? Oh, this one too. This one's one of my favorite. It's so cute. Classic one, really nice.